18 minutes before 9 o'clock this morning, carving the perfect creations. Whether you are going for maybe a traditional jack-o'-lantern or something more intricate, we are helping you make the most of your pumpkins this Halloween because, you know, they're kind of expensive, right? So award-winning pumpkin carver Danny Kissel is joining us now via Zoom. Good morning. Good morning. How are you doing? Awesome. So, Danny, before we get started, I just have to show off these amazing, uh, you know, creations that you and your team have put together. I mean, look at this. Most recently, this 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 dinosaur display that you created with three other carvers for Pittsburgh's Monster Pumpkins Festival. So, I'm hearing this is 8,000 pounds of pumpkin. How long did this take? Four of us, the four of us in the photo, worked about 10 hour days, maybe 12 hour days for four days to get this ready. Uh, there, it's it, it's a really wild feat to be able to do something that size because most people don't deal with pumpkins that big. The center dinosaur, the T Rex, the base pumpkin itself was around 2,200 pounds, and then the, from the jaw up was added from another pumpkin, which was the, the head alone was probably four or five hundred pounds. Oh, wow. That is just incredible. Okay, so for our viewers who are clearly going to be trying something just a little bit smaller, what suggestions <laughs> do you have first to picking out the best pumpkin? When you're looking for a pumpkin, and I try to show everybody all the time, you can see this has a big healthy stem on it. Uh, the green color still has a lot of nutrients in it, so that will feed the pumpkin and actually make it last longer on your porch. You can buy pumpkins at the store. Usually they're cut off about right here. The stems, they're not going to last nearly as long if you can find one that has a, a like a big stem like this one. But that is one of the main things I look for. But I like looking for different shapes too. When you have them set on your porch, if you go with different sizes, you end up with, you know, a, a, something that's a little bit more appealing to the eye than your standard just, you know, basketball shaped round pumpkin. And that's one of the things that I try to tell people all the time is look for something different. Everybody has your typical, I call them Walmart sized, you know, basketball shaped pumpkins. Find one that's tall, one that's flat, one that's skinny, anything. As long as you group them together, they look really cool and set you apart from neighbors. So do you have a suggestion on whether or not you should cut out the bottom of the pumpkin or the top where the stem is so that it does last longer? If you cut the stem off, the first thing that happens is this, this part will wilt or the pumpkin will wilt or something and it falls in, especially if you have your cut going straight up and down and a lot of people mess with that and it's kind of hard to make sure that it doesn't fall. So if you actually cut the bottom off like that, then you don't have to worry about it. You set your light down on the table, just get your light. I use these little pond lights, they're LED, uh, waterproof, set them down, set the pumpkin on top of it. And, so, and you see, I have just a simple goofy one here card for you. I love that. Uh, um, and that probably is harder than it looks, but maybe not. <laughs> Even I could do that one. Probably. It's not that bad. All right. So, Danny, are, are there some common mistakes that people make? And, and how can you fix those mistakes? Now, some of the things that happen is whenever you're carving your pumpkin, like I said, if you carve the top, the lid falls in. If you're carving the eyes, sometimes when you find these really big pumpkins, the little tools you get aren't big enough to go the whole way through. So you have to get kind of a longer paring knife to be able to get those cuts the rest of the way through it. But this will also leave a jagged edge, the little ones you get from the store on the inside. So you can see these in here are really nice and clean. I went by with a the little, I think it's a fruit carving knife is what they call it, a little paring knife and cleaned up just the backside edges. If you go in and you actually cut like at an angle, you can take this little piece here right off of it. And that ends up just a little bit cleaner design. Now with this guy, you can see the seeds are in there. I actually glued them on a, let's see if we can get it in here, on a wooden skewer. And then super glued them tight to it. So, you know, add a little something extra to it. I love it. It's a little creepy edge to it. Okay, so we spend all this time putting together this masterpiece. How do you make the pumpkin last longer? Now, what I do is I typically just spray them with water. Just it's the hydration is what happens to a pumpkin when it sets on your front porch. The sunlight beats down on it, and obviously you guys are in a lot warmer temperature than I am. But that sunlight and the heat and humidity will dry a pumpkin out. All that's happening is the water is just dehydrating it basically. So you can take your pumpkin, soak it in a bucket of water overnight, a couple hours, whatever, and you'll actually see the, the color come back to it. As the pores open and swell, they're 
pulling in the water like a sponge. So if you cut the bottom of it off like this, you can actually set it in a plate of water. They're one of the little containers for underneath your plants to keep water from running all over the porch. You can actually set it on one of those and it'll kind of hydrate it throughout the day as well. You can do a little bit of Clorox in your water if you want to, but a lot of people don't like doing that because the critters that are going to come in and eat the pumpkin later. Uh, so that's up to you. Uh, most of the time, just water and shade and coolness. Does now, I do have a tip that I'll show you. They talk about that, but once you open a pumpkin up, you'd have to smear the entire inside cavity with Vaseline. Okay. And I'm not going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> you, you can do it if you want. I'm not going to. No, I'm going to take your advice. And Danny, uh, what I love is, is that we're getting more advice from you in the next hour of our morning show as well. So thank you for joining us for the 8 o'clock hour.